Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Rong Lu. Hey, Rong. Hi, Robert. We're going to kick off the new year by talking about C++ and Visual Studio Code. Yeah. Now, this is a combination that many people might not think about. We know about Visual Studio Code, but it seems a lot of people are using it for web stuff, for mm -hmm. C Sharp. People know a lot about C++. We've talked about that with Visual Studio. You've been on the show talking about Visual Studio. It's been a very long time. Yes. Welcome back. Yeah, thank but today you. Today, we're going to talk about C++ and Visual Studio Code. Yeah, absolutely. So Visual Studio Code, as many of you already know, um, had built-in support for many uh, web languages, JavaScript, TypeScript, and uh, other languages are also supported via extensions, mm -hmm. actually. Um, and C++ is one of those languages. Um, so we on the Visual C++ team, we actually um, ship an extension for C++ for Visual Studio Code, providing another alternative tool for developing C++ code, um, both on Windows mm -hmm. and non-Windows platforms. So, so it, it kind of makes, it makes mm -hmm. sense that you know, in Visual Studio Code, you, want, you don't want a full-featured IDE. Mm -hmm. You just yeah. want something that's just you and your code and to writing various languages. Mm -hmm. C++ is a language. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah, Visual Studio Code is meant to be a lightweight editor um, as opposed to a fully featured IDE. And there are cases where you just wanted to write some quick code or just read code. Or, or your program is so simple that you don't really need the complex uh, complexity of an IDE, but just want to mm -hmm. simply compile your code and do some simple debugging. That's if that's all you want, and you're looking for a lightweight editor. Uh, Visual Studio Code is definitely a good option. And that could be faster mm -hmm. than yeah, loads faster. installing the C++ workload into Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. You just yeah, make it absolutely. VS Code. Yeah, a much uh, lightweight experience. Mm -hmm. I would say overall. Um, and however, even though Visual Studio Code is meant to be a code editor to start with, and a lot of experience is focusing on editing experience, it does provide uh, built-in support for integrating external tasks. So you can not only do building, but also integrate your external tasks to do testing, packaging, and some of those things you want to, if you want to bring the whole workflow into Visual Studio Code, it's all possible, but you mm -hmm. don't have to. So that's the beauty of it. Cool. It comes with it, a very lightweight uh, tool, but it has been, it is fully extensible and has the flexibility for bringing more functionalities if you want. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, everywhere where uh, Visual Studio Code runs, yep. our extension runs. Cool. Um, so it's definitely an option there out there, whether you're building on Windows or on Mac or Linux platform. So yeah, today I'm going to show All right. a demo Excellent. on a Let's MacBook. See. Cool. All right, so here I am in uh, Visual Studio Code. So to do, our, um, to do C++ development, it is highly recommended that you go get the C++ extension that we ship. So if you go to the extension tab uh, and search for C++ mm -hmm. and find one that's uh, shipped by Microsoft, and just install it right from here. It takes a few seconds um, to get everything installed. And I already have this one installed on my machine. And that's all I need for this demo today. So now let's switch back to my uh, folders view. What I'm going to do is to open a folder that contains some C++ code. So this is a project I downloaded from uh, GitHub. This is called Box2D, which is a physics, uh, physics engine for building uh, games. And I'm just going to open that folder. So first thing you'll notice, um, out of the box, you start getting some basic intelligence, mm -hmm. even without any configuration on your part. So right here, I have um, one of the C++ file open, which is this one. Oh, by the way, this is a pretty sizable project. So you actually see a bunch of CPP and header files in here, lots of uh, folder structures in here. I'm just opening one of them. But if you started um, looking at the code, if you just want to read the code, you start getting um, quick info tooltip. If you hover over, and uh, some basic autocomplete feature as well. Um, so if I want to hover over some of these things here, you get a list mm -hmm. of possible 
matches. Okay. Uh, so that is the basic intelligence experience out of the box. Um, but if you also notice something here on the screen, which says uh, there's an info bar that says config include path for better intelligence results, which means if you're willing to configure your include path and to help our intelligence engine to have more knowledge of your include files, we will be able to give you a much better experience. Is there a reason you wouldn't want to do that? Um, it's work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, yeah. So if it, it, yeah, it's just something you have to go and, and spend some time figuring out. And uh, yeah, if there, are, there have been cases where you just don't have the time to do okay. that, or do you ha you don't have the information. Um, uh, but other box, you get the basic things. But if you want to. Um, try out better intelligence. We definitely recommend you to go and config include path. So I'm just gonna. Oh, let me show you real quick. So uh, this is my browser here. Um, so on our uh, GitHub repo for the CPP tools, um, there's a documentation there that tells you exactly what you need to do to config mm -hmm. the include path, which is gonna be. Um, some of the stuff I'm going to demo here. Okay. So first of all, the uh, IntelliSense include path are defined uh, in this file. This is called uh, ccppproptice.json file. Um, so I already have the here. Oh, let me just get this one. Uh, move this away. Um, where's my file? It's here. Let me show you real quick. So it's going to be command p and uh, look for c slash cpp edit configurations, which takes you that, to okay. that file. Now, in this file, there are multiple configurations. By default, there's one configuration for each OS. So look for the section where your host OS is on. So for example, here I'm looking at Mac mm -hmm. configuration. And this is where the include path is defined. So by default, we look at your, uh, we generate system defaults based on your host OS. So for example, in on Mac, we have, because I have also have Xcode installed, then I get the, the default ones, uh, which should already include a lot of the system headers, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, but we would need to know if there are other libraries you're using. We wouldn't know where your header files are. Okay. We, would, we wouldn't know. So it would be helpful if you can tell us, tell the IntelliSense engine where to find those files. Um, so of course, you can go through the manual steps and figure out everything and put everything here. Uh, by yourself, but we figured uh, users might want us some help in figuring out uh, where those paths could be, because it's a tedious pro okay. process for to figure out every single folder. Um, so one thing we do here is we have light bulb suggestions. So if you look at all these green squiggles and click on one of those, and we show a light bulb, mm -hmm. click on a light bulb. The light bulb actually provides suggestions for where this header could be located. Um, basically, there's a background process um, that searches recursively in the root folder. Like it looks for every possibility in the folder and uh, provides suggestions if it is able to find one. Mm, that's cool. So for example, in here, I can just simply click on the menu, and all the squiggles just went away. Because what happened was we automatically added this path to an include path. So if you go through uh, the light bulb and suggestions, you actually never have to, hopefully, never have to manually edit this file. Okay. But this is the file if you uh, need to do it manually. So now I have that path added, and the IntelliSense Engine is actually um, will be able to give us better results. No, just for comparison. Remember, I was looking at this. Um, uh, member uh, here. Yep. Now we have the exact match because cool. uh, we know where to find it now. Um, of course, there's more intelligence features uh, that we provide. So uh, that is that was the quick info. Of course, we do member list as well. So now you get the full member list. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have um, errors in your code, we will now start to red squiggle your code. This you know, shows real issues in the code. Um, so that's really helpful. Some of the intelligence engines to help you write your code uh, more efficiently. And the other scenario we target is reading code. So a lot of times you open 
a large C++ project, and you want to understand how the code works. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do provide code browsing features. For example, if I wanted to see the definition of this um, uh, member function, I can right click on it and I, we do provide uh, go to definition and declaration. And uh, one thing I like to use is to pick definition right. instead of go to. So we can bring in the definition into the context of the current file. Um, can you edit it from in there? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's like a full window. Cool. Um, so we, and in addition to the go to functions, we also provide uh, code formatting. If you select code, and you can say format document and format selection, we actually use clan format tool uh, to help you format the tool, uh, format your code. Okay, so that's a little bit of IntelliSense and code browsing how mm -hmm. to help you to read code. Um, so beyond that, you might ask, uh, what if I want to compile my code or build my project? Uh, as a, like I mentioned earlier, Visual Studio Code made it possible to build your code from within the, the window without having to leave the whole window. Um, so this particular project is, oh, let me uh, open this file first. So to do a building in Visual Studio Code, uh, the one file you need to config is tasks.json file. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, it's pretty st straightforward. You just want to pass, pass in your command. If you're dealing with one single file, you can even pass in um, the compiler name here and the file you want to compile. And that's all you need to config. And for a bit more complex projects, you might want to use something um, like another build system or something like that. For example, in this particular case, this is config um, to use uh, Xcode build to build. So yeah. what I did so here you're not using MS build using no, Xcode. Build. No, this is complete on Mac. MS I'm using Xcode, and I'm calling the Xcode build command from within Visual Studio Code. Uh, so think, so what I have here is a script file. So I basically go to this uh, directory and call this command. That's all I have in the script file. And then I just have to pass in this uh, script to the command. And that's all I config. And then I can start building my whole project from here. I can say run build task. And Visual Studio Code is going to call this command. And you'll see here, it actually successfully built my project mm -hmm. in here. Um, so that's building. Now, beyond building, so at this point, I already have the output of my project, and I'm ready to run this project. And you can, of course, just simply run, um, launch this XE uh, from within here, and that's the file you want to edit, which is launch.json. Okay. And the only thing, well, two things, I guess, uh, primarily you want to edit here is tell VS Code what the program is that you want to launch and what is your current working directory. That's the two things I configured. And launching is just one scenario, simply run the program. What if you want to debug the program? Mm -hmm. like if there's a bug, you want to quickly um, debug through the code. And the C++ extension provides support for um, LDB and GDB debugger on now Windows platform. And on Windows, you can still use GDB and uh, the Visual Studio debugger as well. So in here, in this case, because I'm on Mac, I'm going to config my configuration to, to use the LLDB debugger. And here's the type of the debugger. That's all, I, all the configuration I need to do. OK. Now I can go back to my code. And I can set a breakpoint here. And uh, this method is called uh, B2 Clyde Circles. Essentially, when two circles collide with each other, this mm -hmm. is going to be, uh, this function is going to be called. Now, we are all ready to switch over to this debug menu. I already have this selected since I only have one configuration. Say, I want to debug, launch this program and debug with the LDB debugger. And all I need to do at this point is just to hit F5, uh -huh. or this arrow here. And uh, this is going to launch our uh, program, which is showing us some physics in here. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to do is to get another circle in here and let them collide. 
Now we're hitting the breakpoint yep, in cool. Visual Studio Code. And uh, here are some things you can look at, as you would expect, local variables. Uh, we can even do expression evaluation. Mm -hmm. And you got full call stack here. It even support uh, multi-threading as well. Now you can step over your code and look at all these variable changes here. Or you can do a run to cursor if you want to run to another line. And everything just works mm -hmm. cool. like you would expect it and very with nice. very simple configuration here. Yeah, so basically I ran through uh, all the way from how you open the folder, mm -hmm. getting Telesense, browsing features, and building and debugging the full cycle. So we do support all those things in Visual Studio Code with our extension. Very nice. Um, so this one more um, scenario that I can demo here regarding IntelliSense. Um, that's what a lot of people uh, ask because Setting up include path is hard. Like I mentioned, a lot mm -hmm. of manual steps. Even though we do provide um, light bulb suggestions, it may not help you to get 100%. Um, so the question is, hey, since I'm able to, sometimes the project's already configured to build with another build system, like CMake. Um, the build system already has the knowledge of which, in which headers you want to include. Okay. Otherwise, it wouldn't build. Uh, can we leverage that in, uh, information and pass that back to IntelliSense and let them figure out the right include path to include? Yeah. So that is the scenario we are targeting here. Let me do a real quick demo here. So first of all, I'm going to open another project um, by adding another folder to the workspace. So that's something brand new supported in Visual Studio Code in last month release, mm. which is now you can uh, open many different folders in the same instance nice. of Visual Studio Code. You don't have to switch between windows anymore. Um, and we do support uh, multiple folders in the, in the C++ extension as well. So mm -hmm. now you can have multiple folders open. And our IntelliSense engine operates uh, independently for different folders. So it right. wouldn't confuse IntelliSense from one to yeah. the other. So it knows what code you're yeah. looking at. Um, so now in here, as I have does another the project. Build, as does the debug. Right, so they are all independent. Um, so in here, in this, in this project, let me close the other project. And here's an, again the, the JSON file if you want to do the manual steps. Um, but let me open the code. Um, some code real quick. Again, we're seeing this message, mm -hmm. and uh, you get and is squiggles. And that going to the individual file level? Is there a way to do it at the folder level? Um, you mean the entire group. project? It is per folder that you open. Per folder. So this file always lives in right. this but .vs code folder, which is per folder. Right. So is there a way, do you have to go into each individual CPP file and configure the include path for that file, or can you configure the include path for the entire project? Um, so this is this file in here. Mm -hmm. This is configuring for this whole folder, which is containing lots of CPP files. So to answer your question, this is not per file. This is per folder you open. Right. So, but if you go in, you're in this file, you get a light bulb saying that you can mm -hmm. configure, right? Yeah. If you go into another, another file. CPP file, would you also get a light bulb? You will. Might have so, different suggestions be right. because they are, these are different headers. So then is there a way, is there a need to, instead of having to go into every CPP, say, I want the JSON file, I want this configured for everything in the entire project mm -hmm. all at once. Yeah, that's a very, very good suggestion. <laughs> um, but no. <laughs> so right now, the, in the, the light bulb suggestions is per translation unit. OK. Um, if you can think of translation unit as f almost equivalent to a file, mm -hmm. um, but it would pull in files that it's, it is dependent on. Like right. this file is going to yep. be compiled com along with the header, okay. for example. Um, but yeah, but right now I'm going to show you a much quicker way to config IntelliSense once okay. for all the files in this folder. 
um, as I mentioned, this project is uh, already configured uh, with CMake build system. Mm -hmm. So this is already set up to build with CMake. Everything works. So now the question is, how do we bring that information back to IntelliSense? Um, it is actually really straightforward. Um, let me go back here and copy this. This is a flag that CMake supports. Essentially, this tells CMake um, when you when you uh, build your when you build this project. Mm -hmm. um, also, export a file that's mm -hmm. named compile commands. Essentially, it's a um, an XML file that has an array of objects. Each object defines how each translation, how each source file, CPP file, should can be compiled um, in the project, which means it's going to have information for which files to include. Okay. Um, so now, all I have to do at this point is to rerun this build process, and I am going to have the additional um, output, which is this compile commands.json file. Uh, this is probably going to take a few minutes, so I'm just going to show you one that I already um, generated earlier. This is the one. Um, essentially, this is defining for each CPP file uh, what compiler is uh, being used and all these defines I'm passing into the compiler. And then it has I, uh, dash i specifies the include path. Right. Um, so you don't have to read through this. Oh, I haven't started debugging here. So we close that. Um, at this point, all I have to do is go back to the JSON file. Now, instead of using the include path, I am going to say I'm going to use a compile commands. And um, I just need to tell the IntelliSense engine where to find that JSON file I just opened. That. OK, so this is the path <coughs> of my compile commands.json. Mm -hmm. And save this file. Go back. Green squiggles are gone. Nice. Just like that. Okay. Now, IntelliSense works for this entire folder mm -hmm. that you have here. And you is never that have specific to, to mm -hmm. CMake? Can this you do is that with Xcode build? Um, this is specific to CMake. Okay. Um, however, we this could be generated by many other build systems, like uh, Ninja supports this mm -hmm. too. Okay. Um, so this is something. Uh, the specification is actually defined in the clan documentation. Um, and uh, CMake is definitely one of the po popular build systems right. that people use today. Um, so yeah, if your project is already configured with one of those build systems, definitely take advantage yeah, of the knowledge definitely. there and get a JSON file generated, and we will leverage that. Cool. Yeah, that's all the all right. uh, demos I want to show awesome. you today. Yeah. Cool. So if you're on Windows, mm -hmm. You've got complete full support for C++ and Visual Studio, mm -hmm. full featured IDE, mm -hmm. the Visual Studio you know and love. Mm -hmm. um, if you just want to do, if you don't have the C++ workload installed and you just want to do some simple C++, this is a nice alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. To on Windows. installing the full C++ workload, which is can be rather large and yeah. can take some time. Yeah. Um, even there, are, even um, in cases where you do have Visual Studio on your box and um, and there are times, even for large if projects, just want to read if code, you want to do a real faster. quick edit, yeah. yeah. I do that with C Sharp Definitely use that as code. a companion tool. I set all the CS files to open in code mm -hmm. because it just loads faster. Yeah. I just want to look at yeah. the code in Something there. Something quick. Visual Studio Code is great for that. Yeah. And then if you're on Mac, mm -hmm. this is a great way to go. Visual Studio for Mac doesn't currently support C++. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're on Uni Linux, mm -hmm. then of course you'd be using this. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. All Sounds right. great. Thanks so much for coming on and showing yeah. us that. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I hope right. you enjoyed our demos. Yeah, great way to kick off the new year of Visual Studio Toolbox, and we will see you next time.